Today I wanted to tell you a bit about the project that me and Michal, the guy over there, have been working on for almost a year now. Uh, and this is the WebRTC implementation of the Elixir programming language. So we are very close to the second release, 0 0.2. And I thought this is the perfect occasion to tell you a bit more about the, uh, the WebRTC itself and why we decided to implement WebRTC in Elixir and how you can use the library right now. So before I start, uh, I'm Ukash. I work here at Software Mansion as a software engineer, mostly, uh, not surprisingly, uh, on multi multimedia stuff in Elixir. And you can find me on GitHub and on Twitter under, the, under its handles. All right, so what is WebRTC? Uh, it is a communication standard that was developed in the last decade. Uh, the development effort was led mostly by Google, which allows you to transmit audio and video between some kind of peers over the network, as simple as it gets. Uh, but the main selling point of WebRTC is the, the very low latency, hence the RTC, real-time communication, the name. Uh, and because of that, WebRTC is the default technology to use in some kind of video conferencing scenarios when the latency is important. Another important thing is the support in browsers. So uh, all of the major browsers uh, implement WebRTC so you can use it uh, in your web apps uh, thanks to high-level JavaScript APIs. And this is also the reason why, for instance, when joining a Microsoft Teams meeting, you can do that directly from a browser instead of downloading a native app. Uh, WebRTC was designed to be peer-to-peer, -peer, which means that when creating something like a maybe one-on-one -on -one meeting app, you can transfer the media data directly between the peers instead of using some kind of relay uh, or forwarding server. Uh, so you save on the infrastructure and make the latency even, even lower. And lastly, this is an open source standard. And also the reference implementation, the libwebrtc is also open source, uh, so you can read it freely. So like I said, the typical scenario for WebRTC would be something like a video conferencing solution uh, where you connect some amount of peers, uh, maybe using the peer-to-peer -peer approach, like in this case, or maybe using some kind of relay server in the middle. Uh, and basically, all of the big players in the video conferencing scene use WebRTC. Google Meet uses WebRTC, Microsoft Teams uses WebRTC, Skype, Discord, Zoom, probably WebEx, uh, and probably many more. Uh, to get to know how WebRTC works, uh, we'd have to take a look at the specification. This is one of the RFCs, the media transport and use of RTP in WebRTC. But I guess before diving into that, we also should take a look at the JavaScript session establishment protocol. But I guess it's worth mentioning also this one. And this is also quite important, and this is quite crucial as well. And without this, you couldn't implement WebRTC at all. And there's this one, and this one, and also this one and also this one, and probably many more. And the conclusion here is that WebRTC is quite complex. Uh, it is not a single protocol, like HTTP, let's say, but more of a mixture and combination of different kind of standards and protocols that are battle-tested, um, mature, uh, and are all combined and hidden underneath uh, high-level JavaScript APIs. So this diagram shows you more or less the layers in WebRTC when it comes to the technology stack. We start at the bottom with the network stuff. So WebRTC usually uses UDP uh, for the sake of the low latencies. And because of in TCP, you had to do the handshake. You have all of the reliability features, which makes the latency quite a bit higher. Thus, we use UDP in WebRTC when we can. Then there's ICE, stand and turn, which are the protocols used to establish the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Because we use IPv4 and NATS, network address translation, establishing a peer-to-peer -peer connection is not as straightforward as it may seem. Uh, so the protocol ICE allows you to do so even when both of the peers are behind some kind of NATS, uh, even multiple layers of NATS. And in some rare cases, when peer-to-peer -peer is not possible at all, we can use a turn server to relay the traffic from, from one peer to another peer. Then there's the DTLS, which is basically a TLS, TLS for UDP, and the S in SRTP, which stands for secure. Uh, these allow you to enable the encryption WebRTC. And uh, encryption WebRTC is enabled by default, uh, and this is actually mandatory, so you don't really have to care about that aspect of security when using WebRTC. Then we have the protocol that actually carries the, the media itself, which is called RTP, Real-Time Transport Protocol. 
It adds some features like sequence numbers, because obviously UDP does not ensure ordering of the packets. Uh, so we need that. It adds timestamps, so you can properly play the media back on the receiver side using proper FPS for video, let's say. And on the other hand, we have the protocol called SCTP, uh, which we can use to relay uh, non-media data over WebRTC, which is also possible, but we're not going to dive into that today. And there, there's the high-level JavaScript APIs, pure connection for media, and data channel for non-media stuff. Let's take a look at how the API looks, peer connection in this case. Uh, this, is a snippet. this is a snippet in JavaScript. You can run it in the browser. And it allows us to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection if some kind of other peer may be a browser or, or maybe a native implementation. And we have to start from uh, creating the RTC peer connection object. Uh, and then we can add uh, tracks to the peer connection. A track can be obtained from other uh, APIs uh, available in JavaScript, like the Media Devices API, which allows you to grab a track from a webcam, a microphone, maybe a screen share, and add the track to the peer connection. We can also set up the on-track handler, which will handle the tracks from the remote peers. In this case, we simply attach the track to an HTML video element. Then we have to create something that is called an offer. Uh, offer is a text message that uses protocol called SDP, another one. Uh, and the SDP is an acronym for Session Description Protocol, and as the name implies, uh, it describes the session, so the number of tracks, type of tracks, is it audio, is it video, codecs used. It carries stuff like IP addresses and ports for the peer-to-peer -peer establishment, um, certificates for DTLS, and some more stuff. We have to create the answer, set it as a, our local description, uh, and then we have to somehow send the answer to the other peer. So even though WebRTC itself is peer-to-peer, -peer, so the media is transferred peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, we have to somehow the, get the offer from one peer to another, and this is not specified by the, by the uh, WebRTC itself. Usually we use something like a WebSocket server to relay the messages. So we get the offer to the other peer, the other peer applies the offer, he creates an answer, and then we get the answer and we can set it as a remote description ourselves. And this is when the media transmission begins and we, assuming that the other peer added some tracks, we can actually see the video or audio in the HTML video element. Right, so this is WebRTC. Uh, now let's ask the question, why would we want WebRTC in Elixir? Um, I'd say it would be quite nice to have WebRTC in Elixir. Uh, firstly, let's assume I want to build something like an SFU, which is a selective forwarding unit. So basically a server that forwards traffic from one WebRTC peer to another. Uh, and if you think about that, the beam was originally designed to be used on a telecom switches, which is a very similar use case. Uh, so because of that beam, and by extension Elixir seem to be the, the natural choice for this kind of scenario, at least when thinking about higher level languages. Secondly, we, we have the membrane framework, which is a multimedia framework that we developed here at Software Mansion. Uh, and it would be quite nice to have WebRTC in Membrane, because uh, WebRTC is basically the technology to use when you want to get media to or from a web browser. And we do have uh, a working WebRTC implementation in Membrane that is Membrane-based, but it's got some issues. And I'm going to tell you about the issues in a second. And lastly, we just want to grow the ecosystem, get the Elixir people interested in WebRTC, get the WebRTC community interested in Elixir, uh, and simply creating the WebRTC implementation would not only give the WebRTC implementation to the ecosystem, but also generate some kind of interest around multimedia and Elixir, which is a win-win both for the community and for us as the implementators. So uh, now we are sure that we want to have Elixir uh, WebRTC implementation, but why, to, why create the second one when we, when we already had the membrane-based one? So firstly, we had some issues with the dependencies. We used some dependencies both in Erlang and in C as NIFs. And maybe sometimes we wanted to contribute to the dependencies, but the dependencies were not properly maintained. Sometimes we had to create the forks of the dependencies and then maintain the forks. And because we did not implement the, the libraries, obviously, uh, our understanding of the underlying protocols may, might not have been the best, which resulted in some issues along the way. Uh, secondly, the API to the membrane WebRTC plugin was completely non-standard and not similar to the JavaScript API at all. 
So when you wanted to use it, you had to not only learn web RTC, then you had to learn membrane, and then you had to learn the API of the membrane of RTC plugin, which is a struggle. And after working with WebRTC for some time, we realized that WebRTC does not map real well to the pipeline model, and membrane is all about pipelines. So this came with a lot of unnecessary complexity, uh, which in turn made, made the plugin harder to maintain, and also it came with a performance penalty. So now we are really sure that we want to implement WebRTC and Elixir. Uh, what are the goals of the project? Firstly, uh, we want to keep the Elixir API as close as the JavaScript API. So let's take this snippet in JavaScript. It maps directly to this snippet in Elixir. And if you take a close look, uh, you can notice basically one major difference. Uh, the uh, peer connection in JavaScript is an object, but in Elixir it is a process. So except for this kind of differences that we made to keep the Elixir implementation idiomatic to Elixir, uh, the APIs are basically identical, so if you're familiar with the WebRTC API, you feel right at home uh, with the Elixir. Next, uh, which is a kind of, a, of an extension of the previous point, we wanted to make the Elixir WebRTC as easy to integrate into Phoenix project as we could. And one step in that direction was to create a live Phoenix, Phoenix Live dashboard extension uh, for Phoenix, uh, which you can add with basically trans of code, and, it, uh, and you get this kind of dashboard that shows you statistics about WebRTC for free. And we kind of mimicked uh, something that is available in Chrome. So if you type Chrome WebRTC internals, you see this kind of statistics about WebRTC. And this is basically the same thing, but for the server side of things. And lastly, uh, we learn quite a lot of stuff about, about WebRTC when implementing the standard. Uh, a lot of stuff was we, we learned when playing with the APIs, uh, and all of that stuff is not very easily searchable on the internet. So we wanted to gather all of the knowledge, or at least a part of, of the knowledge that we gained in the Mastering Transfer Guide in the XWebRTC docs. If you, if you want to know what a transfer is, I guess you have to read the guide. Uh, it is in the, uh, in the library docs, so it uses xdoc, and it's uh, really pretty. And it shows you some examples of more uh, advanced use cases of the API with both snippets in JavaScript and Elixir WebRTC. And it should be a nice reference when working with uh, WebRTC in your application. All right, so now we are at the point where we have uh, an implementation of WebRTC in Elixir uh, that is very close to being featureful. So what do you can actually do with the implementation? Uh, we've created some apps, or some example apps, uh, that I'm going to show you. First one is Reco from Recognition. It is a simple Phoenix uh, web app where the client sends his video from webcam to the Phoenix backend, obviously using WebRTC, uh, where the video is fed into machine learning model using Elixir NX. Uh, the machine learning model does some kind of image recognition, spits out the name of the item on the image, and sends the item name back to the user. And this is how the interface looks. Uh, and I guess this is an example of an app that is not very multimedia streaming centric. So like the WebRTC is not the focal point of the application, but I would argue it makes the user experience quite a bit better because of the low latencies. Uh, and I've seen people use something like sending JPEGs over WebSocket for this, this exact kind of scenario, which is good. Um, and on the other hand, we have the app called Broadcaster, which is a WIP web broadcasting server. WIP and WEB are protocols based on WebRTC, but as you may remember, in WebRTC you had to do the offer-answer exchange by yourself. On the other hand, WIP and WEB standardize the process of an, uh, exchanging the offer and an answer uh, using some kind of simple HTTP requests, uh, which makes WebRTC a viable option for broadcasting and live streaming. So in this case, we have some kind of source. Uh, this is, in this case, this is OBS, and some kind of clients. In this case, these are web browsers. And we simply stream uh, the image from the OBS to, to the clients. And if you're watching this, uh, if, you're, if you are watching this meetup uh, on the experimental WebRTC broadcast, this is exactly what, what we use uh, there. So, and as you can see, the, the latency is, is very quick, something like less than half a second. And we tested that a minute ago, and the latency is about 20 seconds lower than on YouTube. 
which I don't want to brag, but maybe it scales a bit worse. But and these are dApps that we made, and that's basically the Elixir WebRTC. Now we know what WebRTC is. You know that there's WebRTC implementation Elixir, and I have some examples of apps where you can utilize WebRTC. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And this is a QR code for the Elixir WebRTC repo on GitHub, and here are the example apps, uh, the repo with example apps that I've just shown you. Thank you. Thank you very much.